Alright, time for a Nidalee game. Now for today's video, I'll be showing you the easiest way to play Nidalee. Quote unquote easy, because Nidalee is definitely not an easy champion. I need you to keep that in mind for sure. Uh, definitely be careful for this champ. Uh, but I'll show you the easiest way to do it. Um, this is also going to be a low elo game to get like players that are really starting out, right? Uh, get the same type of teammates as them and uh, all of that. Uh, the enemy team is going for a spicy invade. I don't want to be a part of this because I don't want to start the game with a kill because that kind of defeats the purpose. So regardless of what happens, whether my team gets a bunch of kills or if they die, it is what it is. I will just be starting without a leash. Yeah, no kills for me because I don't want to start out with 400 gold because that skews the entire thing. I don't want that. Starting off here, I would always recommend you to start on blue buff on Italy. This clear is much, and I mean much easier than it is to start red buff on Italy. Uh, because red buff is way more tricky. So this is definitely like one thing to already fix uh, or to already look for here. Shit smite early actually because my Q does more damage that way. Really need to get that low. You'll take some damage. Definitely, but you can take the heal second here, basically. So that's kind of what you're looking at. You need to heal yourself as frequently as possible. Because it also provides you additional attack speed. Here too. A couple auto attacks and just switch. And try to keep your heal up as much as you can. Because the heal is what's going to give you a bunch of clear speed. Because it gives a ton of extra, extra attack speed, right? One more auto attack there. We hit the spear on the next camp. Try to drag him in. And then here switch instantly. Heal again. Wait for the Q to come back and then switch again. Really got to keep the heal up there. Fight this out a little bit as well. Not the best spear placement there for the uh, for the monster. Keep healing yourself. You will be able to sustain your health quite effectively as you can see. Throw a spear there. Throw a trap here and just jump in. There you go. You kite, slightly kite this back. You can just finish this camp off like that. And heal again. Keep jumping between camps now, because now you'll have all of your skills. And try to keep switching too. Place a trap like for where you're going to walk into as well. If you hop there, and get the trap and hop again. Keep resetting here. Make sure to keep frequently switching as well. This is very important. This is going to give you more skill uptime, right? And here you can decide to smite this uh, to get some speed if you want to, which is completely fine. You can also not smite it and that'll be your clear basically. And there is definitely things to optimize, but this is like the simplest way of doing it. So this is what we're going to go with. Which as you can see, no leash. Pretty respectable clear speed. Uh, definitely not too bad. I definitely looks something in place here. That minion block. Yep, okay. I don't think she would have flash to be honest. There we go, just auto attacking there. Does he have a hook? I didn't tank turret aggro. I'll take the death, it's fine. It's a trade into the support. Right there, I just flash WQ him. I was hoping in this situation, obviously this is out of my control, and this is also why I wanted this to be in low elo as well. Um, he didn't walk in to that play, right? He did not walk into it. To the point where if he would have walked and tanked turret aggro, while well, my spear still hit him, I could have gone when he tanked turret aggro, so I would not have died. Because I would not have been able to get to her and I would have one shot the Zoe. Alright, so to quickly interrupt this video, I wanted to say that this video has been sponsored by Ray the subscribe button. And the subscribe button is looking a little lonely these days. About 60% of the people are just neglecting him. So uh, he wanted to make the appearance again. Um, yeah, if you want to help him out, click it. Make sure it's not red. And uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. So it's like a, a bit of a difference there too. So what you can expect from your teammates. Yeah, the situation there on bot lane, the main thing I did, I just, like, tried to land my spear. Obviously didn't work because of the minion wave, but that's fine. Ooh, my boy. Plant the spear on him there and just execute him, basically. Uh, yeah, it's fine in that situation. Really, it's all about landing the spear on that one, and then you can just, like, switch forms. Uh, try to execute with Q. I might be able to do this as well. There we go. Sure. Don't touch the wave here because the wave is pushing back towards your top laner. So that's something to keep in mind as well. That's a, uh, a 
And now this one mole fight started recalling in the bush. He couldn't really walk through me either because I could just start auto attacking him and then just get the land the spear for free. And then right there after all of this, we basically just uh, get our clear again. Keep healing yourself for this clear as well. You can also do this where you Q and then as soon as the Q is about to hit there, you can W to get the uh, W partial cooldown reset basically. And so you can execute the camp that way by jumping backwards, which is another mechanic you could get used to, but it is definitely a bit, a little bit more of the tricky ones for sure. If you land your spear, it refreshes your ult cooldown instantly as well. So that's something to think about. There you go, same thing, right? But th like throw the spear and the trap and then they walk it into the trap, basically. Level six. We see the aggression going from the Zoe, like she's walking very far forward into the bot lane. We see if, okay, Zoe just died. Got executed, okay. Kill myself, land the spear. Ooh, that's a swing. I still got him at least. But, that yeah, okay, fair enough. Rotation on the swing there, I suppose. At least I got one person, but Ash got 700 gold off me, so that's definitely not great. Alright, get this. It's gonna build towards the Night Harvester first item. It's gonna be the easiest mythic to go with. Technically, if you're like solo AP, you could go um, for the Rocket Belt. Because the rocket belt gives you flat magic penetration, so that is something you can definitely consider. Uh, but yeah, the night harvester is what is way more like easy to play with and more consistent in that manner as well. Try to like you see my me landing or like, like leading off these camps right by landing the spear first and then throwing a trap so I can get like two W's on it basically in a very short time window. Kind of what I'm looking at here. Probably get to go mid. You want to hug this wall if you want to go, because this bush could be warded, and this way you avoid that ward. He goes forward. Very interesting. Heal him. Get the instant assist if it comes to it. There we go. I didn't have to land anything. I just healed him for the assist, which is something I would always recommend you to do, honestly. Yeah, do a lot of damage. Uh, if you can just get that to land for the assist, uh, no matter the situation, it's always going to be quite nice. Plus it gives your, uh, whoever you're healing an attack speed a buff as well, so that's something to think about too. If this wraps up, it's not. Now right here we could just look at this guy, right? Like he is walking quite far forward, so it should be a decent gank opportunity. Hmm. Only had one place to throw it there. Try to stay ahead of him here. Probably not going to work because the Trendimir also didn't want to walk up, so... Don't really have any hard CC there. He doesn't walk up. It's not going to do much. Kind of just like slightly waiting around here for this Rift Girl to spawn. Because I want to try to play for this as much as possible. Or like towards the spawn timer. Getting Rift Herald on spawn like as close to 8 minutes as you can is very very significant. So I'd always recommend trying to look for that. Keep switching here as well. Place your trap after your Q there. Uh, so you give yourself enough time for like potential W resets right. go pick this up and then we have an entire jungle to clear here basically so we definitely want to try to keep that up too now what i can do in this situation is i just clear my top side and then I, the rest of the plays are going to be bot side right because the rift girl's gone his top side camps are basically gone so i want to clear my top side here and then just basically reset uh, to then play for my bot side camps and dragon it's kind of what i'm going to be looking at and resetting is something i want to do because i have a like a quite a significant amount of gold and i don't really want to like walk all the way down there where i could just like reset now and then kind of have a similar time down there but this allows me to buy my item right so that's kind of what i want to do my uh, adc is struggling quite heavily I'm gonna walk at the krugs here but also at the same time towards the ash potentially if she sticks around she probably wouldn't we're just gonna start this up same thing here throw the queue from a distance and then put your trap so you can get several w's some extra clear speed that way as you get in range with your spears try to throw them put the trap down again this is like a consistency thing right you can get your uh, w's off more frequently this way 
Always try to use your E before your Q in your Cougar form as well, because your Q does uh, more execute damage. Right, so you want to get them lower to deal more damage that way. Oh, Lucian's doing quite well. Oof, that's a three-man mid lane though. That's kind of a spicy one. Don't really want to walk up to him right away. I do have to respect the. Uh, just auto attack him. Like auto attacking him is a very very good thing to do. I cannot. I, I would love to go for this, but he has the uh, way to kind of heal himself a bit. But also the Malphite could still be okay. Malphite's now top lane, so that's not a big deal. The turret's quite low on HP, so we just insta herald this. Uh, if the turret's low like this, you just herald it, and it will kill. Hopefully it will kill. Don't hit me with that. Thank you. Not gonna actively try to fight anything here. It's fine. I maybe I maybe could have gone more aggressive on the uh, on the Silas in that situation for sure, but I got the third, which gives me a tremendous amount of gold, which is already quite good for me. We're trying to take my camp, okay. Right. I'm gonna get hit. Kind of gonna get hit by that regardless. There you go. Stick with this guy, heal yourself as well. Keep auto attacking him. Smite him, that's very good double kill for me. Uh, right there on the ash, I made sure to throw the spear and then I can basically W and then Q midair technically and then the first hit you'll do it will go for the execute uh, pretty much right away so I can get the ash that way and then important there is that I just use my red buff uh, effectively right and just keep auto attacking you have a lot of attack speed increase if you heal yourself so if you keep auto attacking you're gonna apply red buff over and over plus it's just gonna do just nice chip damage you don't want to throw your spear instantly but yeah let them let them Dodge a little bit, if that makes sense. You can stall a bit of time that way. Okay. Uh, actually, I have an instant money for a death cap, so I will buy that. I would recommend going Night Harvester Death Cap as your build. You can go a Magi's, uh, but obviously that's going to go like way higher in like skill levels, I suppose. Just note that Magi's is very good on Italy because you can play relatively safe on this champion. Uh, so that is definitely something to uh, consider. Uh, but in this case, I will not be going for Magi's, uh, obviously. I'll just go Death Cap next. Like, Night Harvest with Death Cap is a very solid setup at the moment. Something I would definitely recommend. If I wouldn't have the option to instantly buy a Death Cap, I'd buy my Sorks there as well. I go like Large World Sorks if I could out of the recall, or like Sorks itself, whatever recall I might have. That's what I would consider. Okay. Don't really want to play towards this when this is on bot side and I have a dragon on bot side as well. So we're just going to play towards the bot side here. Keeping our clears the same as you can see. I'm making sure to throw those traps every time. Let's see if we can go bot lane here. Surely they walk up, right? Yeah, they do. Okay, my Nautilus is not walking up himself. Try to walk with him here. There you go, good. Okay, good. All bad. In that situation, try to walk with them, try to land some spears. And here we can hopefully go for the dragon. Really landing those spears is like the big thing. You always want to try to like get them within the path they're going to walk towards. And that's just mostly a mental game. Uh, what I've noticed though in lower elos is you can just directly throw it at them. And it should generally hit because most of them, they, they don't really dodge. You're getting to like... I'd say Emerald Plus at this point. Um, they will start dodging a little bit more frequently, so you're just going to have to kind of notice some patterns, which is a little bit annoying sometimes. You can definitely get a little tricky here and there. There again, as you can see. Time to trap, get the resets a little bit. Okay, so right here, I want the reset because of the Rift Herald spawning soon, so you kind of really want to focus on like those objectives at the same time. Um, instead of objectives, you could also kind of focus on heavy invading with this champion, which would definitely not be bad. But uh, I'm trying to keep that to a minimum at the same time here too. Like really just focusing on like some decent sequencing with some gank opportunities, right? That generally more consistent. 
for well newer players i suppose lower elo players i guess as well so yeah objective here is the next thing for me so we're gonna move over to this rift herald right now place a couple of traps around here too i uh, might have to help my trendomir here actually Where did this small fight go? Oh, you are healthy, my boy. <laughs> my bot lane is dying. Okay, then. Uh, can I get it? I can get it. Good. All right, let's just spirit this up. My bot lane is dying without, like, really any Silas impact either. Just losing. Oh, boy. I have to respect here because I don't have anything. Yeah, about that. I'm just gonna go for Swain. This Rift Herald doesn't really matter. Good. He flashed the... Uh, he fl his flash timing was quite good, but in that situation, you just close the distance again. And then you just Q him. My bot lane is having some very big copium. They have basically lost their lane 2v2 and they're crying to me. That's That's something new. Very, very big copium. Because, I mean, Silas didn't really do anything, if I'm being honest here. Like, he really didn't. And I ganked everywhere as well. I didn't just gank top lane or anything of that nature. I ganked everywhere. So, just a, a big copium hit on their end. I know there's a control ward there. Don't get me wrong, but... I see them in top lane. I can never really get top lane. I'm just gonna take the camps. Alright, let's see if I can go in from behind on the Zoe here. I'm to throw his... Oh, he hooked him out of my spear. That's lovely. Let's just execute him then. Okay. Try to, like, get something here as well. Place some traps wherever you can at the same time. That really... that Okay. Surely that Herald doesn't get another round, right? Renamir, right? All right, good. Okay, let's walk at this guy. Try to throw a spear from a distance. He's probably going to run up... Towards the top side a little bit. Yep, there we go. Didn't know W it there, so I'm gonna have to flash now. I need to wait. Like, as soon as you land your spear, I admit I didn't want to click my W there. Let's get that straight. Uh, you need to wait until your circle is within range. Like, you see a circle with an arrow appear, basically. Like, you, like this, right? You need to be in range of that before you W. Otherwise, it doesn't close the distance instantly. But you really want to look for that as much as possible. And don't really use your W until that point. Because you actually do get, like, a uh, move speed boost towards the target. So you can use that to your advantage, right? Definitely something to do in that situation. Try placing like consistent traps around as well. This can just catch people for a bunch of damage, especially when you are getting stronger and stronger with more AP. Like you can catch a lot more damage that way. Okay, we see the Malphite going top against Trendemir, so I'm just gonna run top lane here as well. Malphite has pretty much full armor. Right, I'm just gonna hit him. Walk with him here. Heal myself again. Alright, good. Just make sure you don't forget your heals. You don't have to be that worried about a tank, right? So, I, like, I would play more on distance if it wasn't just a full tank. If it was like a Fiora or something, right? I need to not give her as much space on me. But because it's basically just a full tank, I can just do this. Actually, I think I should just buy this here and then we'll go for the Cosmic Drive. Uh, the reason I buy Banshees in this game... Very specifically, it's because of just super heavy AP. Like, they're full AP with an Ash, right? And Ash does, like, some AP damage as well. I believe her arrow and her W do AP. I might be wrong on that. But just the magic resist from this item is going to be really good. So that's why we're buying this right now. we get the other item later. Seems dying. Yeah, it's going to get a little, sp a little spicy, I think. So... Uh, all I have to do is land one spear and she dies. I'm probably going to lose Dragon here. I might hit the Ash when she's walking down towards Dragon, which is kind of what I'm hoping for. Oh, she's going to go for turret. Okay, fine. Okay, Jesus Christ. Your champ's annoying as hell, my boy. The slow on that is really kind of crazy. Let's uh, land him with a spear here. I don't really want to close the distance on him because if he presses W on me and heals everything back, 
I uh, probably die from that HP range. Which I don't think would be worth it since I'm a thousand gold. I wasn't going to risk it there. If he would have engaged on, Sim on the Samira, I would have gone for it. But yeah. All right, I really would like to do this dragon if that's at all possible. Let's say control ward. I kind of hope she hits. Be placing some traps, heal this guy as well. You want to kind of play your team fights as like a sentry turret type of deal. You want to be on distance as much as you can be. I'm going to give her the kill. Uh, as much as you can be to just heal and spear. That's really what you want to look for in most cases. Fight him out because otherwise I wasn't really going to get him. Good. Hit him with this. Nope, I missed. You really see me create space for myself, right? Like this is very, very important actually. I knew she was going to try to turn around, so I threw my spear directly at her. And it kills. Uh, but yeah, you see a very important thing there. I try not to walk close distance at all. I always try to, like, heal back, heal my ADC. Um, try to land some good spears. And that's really the way you want to play these team fights. Like, that's just all you have to look for. Like, walk back, really look for those spears. And then just heal consistently. And try to uh, create opportunities with your spears. You only want to go in with your W if you really can guarantee a kill. Um, and you don't really risk dying at the same time, right? That's really when you want to go in. Otherwise, you really don't want to go in. So that's what I'm trying to avoid at all costs. This is the way you're going to see me play this out completely as well. I'm going to consistently keep staying on as much distance as I possibly can. And then, uh, yeah, I will create space, create, opportun create opportunities, land spears for damage. And then from that point forward, my team can either engage or I might be help, uh, might like someone might splinter off and that is a target I could then W into basically. I'm not going to go Lich Pain here either, which would like incentivize more of a jumping in type of playstyle. Uh, instead, I'm just going to go like super AP heavy and like a distance type playstyle. So uh, no real Zonias needed. No Lich Pain needed in this setup. Which, like, you can go Zonias instead of Banshees, by the way. Uh, but against this team specifically, Banshees is way too good not to take. So I will absolutely take Banshees here. Don't be afraid to throw your spears either. A lot of them can miss. A lot of them can go completely wide, which is fine. As long as you're throwing them, basically. You are... I have to flash that one. I might be dead here. A bubble there hit me, so I have to flash. Be very careful. Keep distance. Heal him. Keep more distance. This is good. That's good. A little bit off my screen, but it works. Baron? Like, really, the distance there. Very important. Like, because I kept as much distance as possible, I was able to create space, like, between me and Zoe Bubble, make sure I don't get engaged on too well. So there's a bunch of things I did there to ensure that I can be as safe as I can be, uh, which helps me a tremendous amount in just, like, surviving the team fight and having more opportunities to actually spare things. Gonna just heal my Nautilus. If he, ta if he Nautilus tanks Baron, um, we will do more damage because whoever tanks Baron does 50% less damage to Baron. So healing my Nautilus the entire time there would be good because he was quite low HP. If my Nautilus would be full HP, it would be best to heal your AD carry because it gives extra attack speed your heal. So your AD carry or somebody that needs the attack or can use the attack speed buff would do more damage with it. Uh, so that would be an option there. Um, no, I don't really... I mean, I... Yes, I kind of need a void. This guy's building very tanky too. I suppose going void staff here is fine then. Yeah, it's okay. I'll get a blue pull too. Um, is that my blue buff? I'm gonna go. I I think I picked it up. I'm just. I'm gonna go pick it up in case it is not something I picked up. Okay, no, it was. Okay, I'm just tripping. That's fine. Because like, if I can get the extension on the blue, it is worth walking up here for, really. So that's why I did that, but uh, yeah, it's okay. If the enemy team doesn't build any magic resist, you don't really need to Void Staff. But, I mean, he's already getting a Negatron Cloak. And, I mean, Silas is building very tanky. This guy's building a Banshees. Like, there's definitely enough magic resist to be had there. At this moment in time, I have so many kills. And I don't really gain too much anymore with the gold I would gain. So I'm gonna try as much as possible, like right there as well. I'm not executing the kill. I'm trying to get it low to the point where my team can get it. Because if you can split some of the money towards your team, that is quite good. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Oh. 
I'm trying to stay out of vision for the ward so I can land that. Yep. Walk with him. Within range there. There you go. There you go. Really like waiting patiently there as well. You are very tanky, my boy. Heal myself. Jump out. Playing slowly, playing in towards my team, making sure I create as much space again as I can. All this is important. I didn't actually completely one shot the Ash with this spear, but this might kill her. There it goes. Heal this guy up. There he goes. Good. And then heal yourself again. Really the concept of this, like as much space as you can possibly create every single time. You really want to be doing that as much as you can. The more space you can create, the better it's going to be. I didn't throw my spear correctly there. I should have killed him. Uh, heal yourself here. Just keep, keep consistently getting your heal off cooldown to sustain yourself and sustain your teammates. That guy needs a heal. You're throwing spears as well. As much distance as you can. He's dead. Didn't have a heal for that one. And more space. Heal this Nautilus. Creating like as much space the entire time here as you can. Kill that guy. Sustain yourself. Keep distance. Sustain him a bit. There you go. So I finished the Void Staff here. And again, no Lich Pain. You can buy a Lich Pain uh, for more sustainability. But uh, 4,500 damage on Night Harvester. And that's really all the damage you can show on that one. Uh, so yeah, that's it for Nidalee. I hope you guys have learned something from this. If you have any questions, leave those below. And I'll see you guys in the endgame stats. Alright, so for the endgame stats here, I ended up doing 52.2k damage, which is like triple the rest of my team, basically. So that is really, really good damage output there. A lot of this is just like that consistency, right? Like space and spears is really how you have to look at it. Create as much space as you can. Don't try to be in, in, in their face unless they are essentially a free kill or if they like splinter off because you don't want to be diving into the enemy team. Otherwise, you just heal and throw spears and uh, place traps and throw spears, which is going to be a very easy way. Like for most of those team fights, right? You just saw me hit a spear and then that either chunks them so I can jump in or I just keep the, keep the, the space as much as I can and allow my team to go in instead. Um, and yeah, it create that creating that space is what's going to give you consistency throughout your team fighting stage, especially. So... Good damage there. Uh, 1,200 true damage, which is smite damage. Objective damage at 43.5. Uh, the most important objective you want to play for is the 8-minute Rift Herald spawn. Uh, try to be there on spawn or as at least close to spawn as you can be. After that, it's mostly dragons, but the second Rift Herald can definitely still be taken, don't get me wrong. Uh, but the first one takes a heavy priority because of turret platings and allowing you to get a lot of gold out of that, which was something I could do. So I took the Rift Herald and I pushed the entire mid turret down for a tremendous amount of gold and that skyrocketed my game tempo. Even if my team was struggling there, because of that extra skyrocket in gold, I was able to uh, really take over. So that was quite good. A healing done at 27.2k. This is like consistent E heals, which will do a lot. So that's very good. A damage taken at 29.7. Self-mitigated damage at 20.02 actually. 20.2, whatever. A uh, gold earned at 19.4. And then for the runes, uh, Dark Harvest dealt 3,400 damage. This is really good in combination with your spear gameplay, right? You're like proking Night Harvest or proking Dark Harvest. If you like, like land your spear, it will do a significant amount of damage. I can almost completely one-shot the Ash, for example. So that's a very good example on that one. Um, sudden Impact for the 1,200 bonus. This basically just applies to when you jump in to execute. So you land the spear and then the, your WQ, you can go in and then this will do extra damage on that, which is quite nice. Uh, eyeball for the extra AP, then Relentless for the extra map mobility movement speed, which gives you more overall game tempo. So Relentless in combination with Nidalee passive, in combination with Blue Smite, is going to give you a lot of mobility around the map, a lot of movement speed around the map, which is what you saw for me as well, right? Just a lot of mobility, so yeah. A uh, transcendence uh, refunded 12 cooldown, uh, 12 seconds, which is not the biggest thing why you take this. It's actually just 10 flat ability haste in a rune, because at level five and at level eight, I believe, you get five ability haste. So it's just like a, uh, a flat 10 ability haste, which is really good for like overall cooldown reduction or ability haste uh, to get more spears and more heals in for the type of playstyle you're looking for in the mid to late game, right? 
and then water walking for just again more map mobility so yeah that is it for nidley i hope you guys have learned something from this and uh yeah i will see you guys in the next video tomorrow goodbye